We note that after the fall, God's first action is to move toward fallen humanity in their sin. This is crucial for us to understand and cling to. As bad as this first sin of Adam and Eve was, God's first move is toward them. We read in Genesis 3 that the Lord immediately seeks them out. Adam, where are you? This is one of the most important scenes in the Bible. I mean, think about it. Holy God moves toward his creation even though they have turned away from him in rebellion, rejecting him, and they have looked for life apart from his overwhelming goodness. They rebel and God pursues. This is nothing short of amazing, and it invites us to know God in better and deeper ways. He pursues you and me in the same way. We run, he moves toward. This movement of God toward humanity is clearly evident throughout the Old Testament. Nehemiah 9 provides an excellent review of the history of Israel, and it makes it abundantly clear that God moves toward his rebellious people continuously. In the New Testament, we see that God still does this. Listen to the words of Paul in 2 Corinthians 5, 21. God made him who had no sin to be sin for us, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. God does this even while we are in our sin actively rebelling against him. Paul notes this in Romans 5, 8 when he states, but God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. It is an amazing exchange as Peter exclaims in 1 Peter 3, 18, for Christ died for sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous to bring you to God. The message of the Bible is clear. Humanity rebels and God moves toward making a way for relationship. 